Thank you to Conflict of Nations for sponsoring this video. Why is it so expensive to build a modern warship? Well, according to the U.S. Navy, it's three major factors. First, the complexity of systems using cutting-edge technology. Modern warships are among the most technologically advanced systems in the world. They incorporate the latest weaponry, propulsion, communication, and defensive systems. Integrating and testing these systems often require extensive research, development, and time, each of which drive up cost. Second, reliability requirements. Warships need to operate reliably in the harshest of environments on the planet for extended periods of time. This requires top-notch materials, precise manufacturing, and extensive testing, all of which are expensive. The supply chain considerations are the last one. Maintaining a robust defense industry base is a strategic imperative, which sometimes means the Navy can be constrained in selecting from limited sets of suppliers. This can reduce competitive pressures and keeps prices high. And that is why aircraft carriers cost in excess of $13 billion today. But now you can build a Navy with free to play Conflict of Nations. That's right, Conflict of Nations is a free online PVP strategy game. Choose a real country to lead in modern global warfare. Fight up to 128 other players in real time in games which can take weeks to complete. Use many different units to build your army. Tanks, jets, nuclear submarines. Declare war on your neighbors or forge alliances with other players. Choose your own strategy and engage in epic battles and take over the world. You can play with the same account on both PC and mobile. You get an exclusive GIF by clicking the link in the description. You get 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. Offer only available for 30 days, so don't lose any time. I love the long-term strategy aspect of the game. You have to plan ahead to win. Try Conflict of Nations for free. Build a strong military, choose your strategy, engage in epic PvP battles, and take over the world. Click the link in the description to get your 13,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. Offer only available for 30 days, so don't lose any time. Click that link right now and support the channel. Thank you for doing so. Let's head over to the Pacific, where uncrewed surface vessel Ranger and Mariner are transiting to Japan. The Arleigh Burke class destroyer USS Shoup is escorting the uncrewed vessels. The USV Division 1 ships are deployed with the Pacific Fleet right now. Each of the uncrewed surface vessel brings a battery of SM-6 missiles and additional detection capability to the fleet. This week, two of the USVs are conducting at-sea testing with an LCS ship based out of Japan. This is one of the original goals of Surface Combatant 21 program from all the way back in 1994 that gave birth to the Zumwalt and the littoral combat ships. This is distributed fleet architecture in action. We're doing it today, folks. It's no longer a theory or a strategy on a whiteboard. It's in practice now. This is one of the roles the LCS was designed for, linking multiple uncrewed assets at sea in contested waters. This is the LCS with offensive punch and fleet defense capability. That's right, I said something nice about your LCS so all you fanboys can calm down. All you mighty keyboard warriors, hold thyself. From Japan, the seventh fleet is back at sea, fine. USS Ronald Reagan Carrier Strike Group is underway in the Philippine Sea again after an 11 day delay that included six departure cancellations. The US Navy did not give a reason for the almost two week delay, but I can tell you from personal experience, some likely reasons would be any major system that has to do the operation of the ship and while these are nuclear powered aircraft carriers the reactor could be working fine and probably is but there's backup systems that in case something happens with the reactor at sea these backup systems would come online and keep the aircraft carrier going that's just one speculative po uh, possibility here another one is any system that has anything to do directly or indirectly with crew safety they don't mess around with that. So if there's a problem with some of those systems, then of course the uh, ship would stay in port until they get, get those right. And then finally, supply system, maybe they don't have all the parts they need uh, in case something goes wrong at sea to be able to replace it. That's all speculation on my part. The Navy did not confirm any of that, but those are just some of the things that I've seen in my career when, when I was in the Navy. So the USS Ronald Reagan is 20 years into its operational life now. That's getting close to its halfway point. And this is the time 
in a ship's life where we're going to begin seeing system failures. And so it's probably more, you know, one of those systems rather than a supply issue or a safety issue. Now, she is due for a midlife modernization at Bremerton, Washington next year. So she's going to finish out her forward deployed status in Japan the rest of this year and going into the spring. And then we expect her back in Washington next summer. Uh, if there's any word on what caused the delay, we'll bring it to you here, okay? All right, and credit to the United States Naval Institute for this weekly graphic that they provide to the public that we often feature here on the Subreef channel. This is just over 100 U.S. Navy Battle Force ships are deployed right now, and 70 of those are at sea at time of this recording. Here you can see we have a lot of activity going on in the uh, Western Pacific, like we just talked about. But if you move over towards uh, Saudi Arabia, in the Gulf of Aden, we have USS Bataan uh, Amphibious Ready Group is at sea again there. Looks like they're just outside the Persian Gulf. Gerald R. Ford continues uh, his patrol in the Mediterranean Sea, USS Mesa Verde, which is an LPD carrying a lot of Marines. They've been doing a lot of NATO exercises up there, both, both in the Baltic Sea and now in the North Sea. I'm not sure what they're doing today. They may not be in an exercise right now, but they've been very busy up there. And those crews are being rewarded with some awesome Liberty ports up in the Scandinavian Peninsula. Well done to all them. If you go off the west coast of San Diego, you'll see the USS Theodore Roosevelt is doing some kind of training or workup. So she may May be next in line for the deployment across the Pacific. We'll have to see what happens with her when it comes to that. So a big shout out to the men and women who are serving every day, keeping these ships at sea. These are the normal, average, everyday Americans who volunteer to join the Navy, keeping our ships going in the most grueling of conditions, the, the most demanding environments that you can imagine, and doing so in the most honorable way. So we here at Subbrief salute everyone's service out there, whether you're in the Navy or in another branch. Bravo Zulu to all of you. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks to Conflict of Nations, a free online PvP strategy game happening in a modern global warfare for sponsoring this video. You get an exclusive gift. Click the link in the description to get 13,000 gold and one month free premium subscription for free. Click the link in the description. Choose your country and fight your way to victory.